week on the coffee hour i'm andy bates i'm sarah golsa i'm gonna chat with a church musician and our very own sacred music curator in just a moment thanks to concordia university wisconsin for supporting the coffee hour find out more about concordia university wisconsin at cuw.edu live uncommon joining us today luther golseth church musician and sacred music curator here at kfuo and uh, it happens to be my husband. <laughs> Luther, thanks for happens. Thank, we we have been blessed. Uh, you, I, I think you might have met Luther, the audience, the listener, not, they, me. not you. You met him a long time ago. <laughs> listener, though, li- met Luther. I think during Sherathon, we yep. we had your debut. I mean, they've heard him before singing in church. They just didn't know it was you. Um, but uh, joining us on Sherathon to talk about the Sacred Music Project here at KFUO and updating the music library, which you've been doing a fantastic job in, and uh, doing that again for another year here at KFUO. Yes. We're super excited. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's it's nice to have a roommate in the CD library here. You have a roommate I, I, I here. have a roommate, yes, <laughs> <laughs> here at the CD library. Um, so it is Bach week, and we just heard, um, for those listening to the live broadcast, just heard a piece that you're going to share with us in, in a little bit more about that in just a moment. But we're talking about chorales and hymns because this is a this this is an important part of Bach week, right? Yes. yes. So so let's start with what is a chorale? A chorale is in its lo- in its narrow definition is the chorale tune, the the tune that we would hear and sing the melody to for our hymns. All right. Short and sweet. So then what is it? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> See, he didn't read the 12-page definition from the the uh, the dictionary in the music library. The New Grove. That was a... Is it really 12 pages? No, but it's okay. lengthy. It's like eight. Oh, well, <laughs> it's not that much shorter. So then on the flip side, what is a hymn? Well, a hymn would be a four-part setting, typically four-part setting, of the chorale tune. So it's the accompaniment to it. It could be sung... In four parts, or it's an accompaniment that's designed for just a keyboard to accompany a unison congregation. Do we know which came first? That was my question oh, too. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> when we were talking about this in the in the office, I'm like chicken or egg, which comes first here? Yeah, <laughs> the tunes for sure, because you go all the way back to Gregorian chant, and that's what it was. It was just a unison, and then it added one or two poly- polyphonic parts underneath to add. Harmony, and then as harmony grew, and the language got more complex, we get more chords and things like that, and then we start to get more things like we have now in our hymnal. And polyphonic is just fun to say. Correct. How many times a day do you get to say polyphonic? Not enough. <laughs> we so, can we can fix that if you really want to. <laughs> so the relationship between a chorale and a hymn, help us understand that relationship a little. That would kind of be the same. You can kind of use the names interchangeably. Chorale would be the fancy word for a hymn. And the, we like to use fancy words. Correct. Chorale <laughs> can sometimes be used in a like a chorale like manner. So you'll mm-hmm. find chorale movements within larger works that are not necessarily a hymn. Um hymn would be very specific to the text, as in the text is going to be sacred. Uh, a chorale not necessarily has does not have to be sacred by its nature. So why is this a key part of Bach's week? I mean, Bach week here on the coffee hour and 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 Bach's history. As a Lutheran, Bach was very aware of its use in the church and how Dr. Martin Luther wanted it to catechize the congregation. So he used it. A lot. Just, I mean, it's in all of his works. I have 12 pages from BachCantatas.com of his usage of chorale tunes. I'm working through trying to get LSB numbers to the ones that are in there. Um, It's going to be several dozen, I'm sure, tunes in LSB that Bach has used in his works. And some of these are in three or four works. Some of them are in a dozen 
or more different works. And there's lots of different styles, which we can talk about more as we get through this show. Very good. Do you, um, Maybe I'm just going to throw this out there. Do all of Bach's cantatas have chorale movements? Do you know? Ooh. <laughs> Stump the I would assume yes, but I don't know Ooh. for sure. Because there's your next there are some, project. <laughs> well, like, I, okay, hold on. The sacred or the secular cantatas, like his coffee cantata and stuff like that, I don't believe that has a chorale in it. But the sacred ones probably do. Probably. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so you mentioned all the different ways that he uses the cantatas. What are some of those examples? The first one that we listen to, Ein Festivalwerk, uh, A Mighty Fortress as Our God. As LSB 656 or 657, um, the particular chorale that we heard was his setting uh, movement eight from chorale uh, cantata BWV number 80. And so that'd be the what our fourth stanza is, it would be the fourth stanza that Martin Luther wrote um, in a slightly, in, in the original translation that Martin Luther, or not translation, in the original version that Martin Luther wrote. So Luther wrote the text. Was that Luther's tune as well? Correct. So Bach took Luther's tune and then built on that. Correct. See, I'm learning here. This is like music, music appreciation. It is. He also uses <laughs> he also uses the chorale tune in the opening movement of the cantata, but it's highly embellished and very fancy. So what else do you want us to know about this Einfestberg? This particular one, nothing more. <laughs> That's it's quite. It's good. quite enough. It's it's just a very standard setting. We sing, we have that setting in our hymnal, and we have it two different. Yeah, which one is it? Uh, it Talk is six fifty seven. Goodness. <laughs> um, so we have two different ones. We have the isorhythmic and the rhythmic, and the. Short answer to why we have those two different ones. We have the original, which is da 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 bum 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 bum. The second one evolved kind of over a hundred or more years of unaccompanied singing in large German cathedrals. And essentially what happened over time is the rhythm slowed down and flattened out. So when it probably got somewhere to the a mighty fortress is, and you can see why it just. You'd have to take a nap in the middle of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's fast and, and exciting now. <laughs> yes, or was originally. All right, so I'm a bird. We've covered that one. You have a few more for us to look at. I do. All right. What's the next piece? Our next would be moving on to Easter, Christlag and Todes Banden. This is movement number four of that. And a couple of things here. This is what I would call it would be an embellished chorale. Um, you can very clearly hear the chorale tune, but it has other notes that are added in to add to the text painting. And the particular moment in the text painting that we want to pay attention to, the music stops. There's a little bit of a break. And the text there is, Da bleibet nicht den tot, den tot gestalt, which is, here remains nothing but death's outward form. And Bach just completely pauses the music and then continues on, and then ends with all of these at the end. Um, and this is the stanza number four of LSB 458, uh, which is Christ, Jesus lay in death's strong bands. If you're listening to the broadcast of this and the stream of this, then you get to hear it here. If you're listening to the podcast, we'll provide some links where you can find the music online to hear mm -hmm. some samples of it as well, because we've got to make sure we're following all the copyright laws. Yep. At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's 
uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50 plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Bach Week. Today we are talking with Luther Golseth, church musician and sacred music curator, and also happens to be Sarah's husband. Yeah, I'll claim He's, uh, he shares an office with me, though, here in the CD library Ouch. at the KFUO. Ouch. <laughs> oh, because of her comment. That well, was because you shared an office with me. Well, <laughs> I well, may throw I things hear stories about that, too. <laughs> I may throw things. Um, so it's Bach Week, and we're talking about chorales and hymns, um, particularly looking at uh, the work of J.S. Bach this week as the church commemorates him. And um, so we just heard... A, a familiar tune. Well, it sounded familiar to me. Uh, you, you want to unpack that for us a little bit? Oh, Sacred Head Now Wounded. Um, this is one of Bach's organ chorale preludes. Um, it's a later on in his collection of works. It's not a group. We have the Orgel Line, which is a collection of about 50 organ chorale preludes. Um, this is just another grouping of them later on in his works, number 727. Uh this recording that we particularly heard was a an arrangement of it for organ and trumpet. It was originally just for organ. It would it would sound very familiar to that with the registration on the organ, um, as it is set as a um, accompaniment with the melody that you can hear the melody very clearly. Uh, and in this case, Bach sets the melody very straightforward but heavily embellished, um, so you can hear the chorale tune within what he does, but then there's lots of the extra notes again around it that uh, help to set the mood, the the pensiveness, the sorrowness of that tune. It's very effective. Yes. So is this a Bach tune, or did he take a tune from somebody else and make it make it something for him? This is, again, another tune that somebody else wrote, and Bach worked with it and used it within his works. Do we know who that was? We do. Be Hans Leo Hassler. All right. Very good. Is there anything else that makes this one a, a unique uh, a unique piece from Bach? Anything that's, that differ, differentiates it from, from his other works? I'm sorry. Words Different. are hard today. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the one of the other ways. He has many different ways that he sets the chorale tunes. Um, there are the chorale tune preludes. Um, sometimes they are very clear that you can hear the chorale tune like this. Other times they're a little bit more hidden within the other notes that are happening. Um, it all kind of depends on what Bach was wanting to do with that particular tune. Um, we have those. We have the simple chorales like we listen to that come out of the cantatas. He also has a whole section of about 40 or more um, that are just different settings of a lot of these tunes that he loved to use. And he wrote other settings of those. Um, I'll hopefully begin to add those kind of in periodically into our listening library for our pleasure as I can find good recordings of them, which is <laughs> more of the challenging part. Um, unless there's other good choirs out there that hear this and <laughs> Want to start recording some of those for me, please, <laughs> for us, for KFU. Um, so then there's that. Um, and you also hear it within larger works. So he's got lots of organ works um, that are even some of the orchestral works where the tune creeps in and he brings things in or he just writes a whole movement, sometimes eight, nine minutes of music based on a chorale tune. And in those, you have to be a lot more careful about listening for the chorale tune to pop out. Mm -hmm. Our next one, our last one, is From Heaven Above. And that is one of the more slightly advanced versions of his embellishments. Um, you'll have to listen to the chorale tune in segments. It'll come out in little bits. Um, listen to the lowest notes, the pedal notes in the organ, because they will be very clear, but you're going to hear it several times in the hands before the pedal the feet actually play these notes of the chorale tune. I appreciate how you covered 
like the church year for us too. <laughs> was that on purpose? Although, not as much. <laughs> it's just in your it name. It's just church baked music. into the DNA. <laughs> <laughs> It, was, it wasn't consciously planned. <laughs> Luther, thank you so much for spending some time with us on the coffee hour during Bach Week and helping us uh, learn more about chorales and hymns and uh, more about Bach this week as well. You're welcome. You're listening to the coffee hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golsa. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you. Anytime. Anywhere. Anywhere.